Okay. So Joseph is actually deliberately choosing women who are not only pregnant, but like about to give birth. So if Joseph Smith is looking for immediate sex with like the hottest chicks in Nauvoo, like he's doing it wrong in Quaker, you needed to like give him lessons or something, right? Because yeah. like, <laughs> like somebody needed to teach this guy because he he doesn't know. He he's using their pregnancy he as, as proof that he's not having sex with them because that oh, would have been taboo. We have put up with 200 years of lies, <laughs> nearly 200 years of lies about polygamy. And finally Dawn just blows the doors off a 200 year old castle of lies. <laughs> I I need some time. To I did not know this. this is the ending coming. It yeah, like, I, I know for real. This. Woo! I've got more. This suggests something. Again, something more is going on than this Joseph Smith character just like making up religious claims so he can have immediate sex with all the hottest babes in Nauvoo. What's the number one lie you feel this debunks? that Joseph Smith's polygamy was uh, uh, opportunistic and it was about sex. So you think that this, all of this evidence here, you say completely disproves that he was a conman on the subject. Yeah, I think this refutes that. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Ward Radio. I'm your host, Cardinal. I'm joined in the studio by Kwaku L. Brad Whitbeck, Don Bradley, and Sean Bailey, all right? And Don Bradley, all right, he is the prodigal professor of polygamy and has a bombshell for us on polygamy that really hasn't been discussed or talked about or revealed anywhere else. I'm going to let him do all the talking. Don Bradley, dive right in. Okay. So we've talked in another episode about Joseph Smith's relationship with Fanny Alger, or as the family apparently pronounces it, Alger, Fanny Alger. And so we argued in that one that the evidence that we have shows that despite what many people think, this was not an adulterous affair. This was actually an early polygamous marriage. But this marriage in some ways was a kind of one-off event, right? So this was... Uh, it looks like Joseph's experimenting with polygamy. He's not trying to set up in Kirtland a polygamous system, like a whole marriage system, where he's bringing other men in and having them marry plural wives. This uh, relationship doesn't last, right? It's discovered, um, and after it's discovered, the, the relationship dissolves. And so rather than a new marriage system in Kirtland, we have experiments with trying to do polygamy. In Nauvoo, we end up with an actual polygamous marriage system, okay? So oh, we okay. have mm. clear dates when the marriages were performed. We know exactly who performed a number of the marriages. When the relationships are discovered or outed publicly by John C. Bennett and others, the relationships don't stop, they continue. Uh, Joseph Smith is bringing other men in on this. He has Willard Richards take a plural wife. He has Brigham Young take a plural wife and so on. Right. So in Nauvoo, we have something new happening in regards to polygamy, something big. Right. And so part of what I want to argue is that if we want to understand what Nauvoo polygamy is about, we need to look at the prototype case of Nauvoo polygamy. In other words, who's like the first, who's Joseph Smith's first Nauvoo plural wife? What is going on in that situation? Mm. And that will tell us what is he thinking? Right. What are his motives? OK, have we known who this person is? So there's been an idea for many years ever since Andrew Jensen did his list of Joseph Smith's plural wives in 1886. He said that the first plural wife was Louisa Beeman. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. he was told that uh, and we've got a picture of her. Um, he was told that in the discord uh, in the no, in the document that I sh shared with you. They oh, OK, you. cool. Awesome. Yeah, keep going. Um, so, um, uh, it's a painting. Um, so Liza Beeman, uh, was put forward by her brother-in-law who performed the marriage as Joseph's first plural wife in this dispensation, right? And he said that their marriage occurred on April 5th, 1841. He gave an exact date in an affidavit and that affidavit was used by uh, Andrew Jensen and published. And so that became in many people's mind, the kind of official date for Joseph's first Nauvoo plural marriage, his first foray into this new marriage system that he's putting forward in Nauvoo. 
And the uh, one of the problems with this uh, next next slide. Okay, cool. Um, next slide. Wait, one comment on this picture, really. Fast. Okay. Uh, it looks like it took the artist about three hours to do the shading on her upper lip. Oh god! Oh wow! It looks, oh no! It looks an awful lot like the picture in uh, uh, the illustration in Napoleon Dynamite. Oh, just an aside. No, <laughs> that's funny. I never realized that. Okay, cool. Keep going. So yeah, a um, couple slides down. Okay, so mm -hmm. go to this one, early Nauvoo wives. Mm -hmm. Okay, rock on. Here we go. We're gonna push it up on the screen. I don't so know yeah, how see. much people can read this, but we've got in the traditional listing here we've got louisa beeman is placed first april 5th 1841 then in the column that maybe you can't see or i guess you i don't know can there you we see go it? Um, yeah it says she is single but then when you look at the other women that he marries early in nauvoo they have all already married someone else in one case uh his sister-in-law joseph's sister-in-law the husband was deceased now um but in the other cases the husbands, legal husbands are still living. And so this has been called polyandry, right? Like uh, one man being uh, married to, or sorry, one woman being oh, married to more than one. Interesting. Um, can can we pull up the that time. chart again? Yeah, right here. Sorry, as you're, as you're talking about this. So they're basically all married except Louisa Beeman and then Agnes Coolbr Coolbr right. So Smith? So they, they're all married. They all have previously married, including Agnes except for Eliza Beeman, she's the outlier here. So it's sort of like on Sesame Street, like one of these things is not like the other. Yeah, right, right. She's the outlier, Yeah, right? And so um, another thing that you can see, if you can see those dates, um, okay. is that um, there is very little gap between the early Nauvoo plural marriages, except between the first and the second, right? Eliza Beeman, you've got a six and a half month gap to her between her and Zina Huntington Jacobs. Okay. And whereas for the others, you just have a gap of like a few weeks or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so once Joseph goes into Nauvoo plural marriage, it seems like he really like does a bunch of uh, series of marriages close together, yeah. except after Louisa Beeman. So she is again, the outlier in this pattern, mm. right? So why is she the outlier? Well, if we, if we um, keep going, um, okay. One so, more slide down. Time gap between um, next wife. We got it all uh, yeah, right although here, we already addressed that. Kind okay. Of, um, so, okay. Uh, and I don't know who's going to be able to see these, but. Um, Everybody can. This is an HD, okay. brother. So you've got, yeah. you've got questions about um, uh, Noble's April 5th, 1841 date that everyone uses to show that Liza Beeman was the first Nauvoo plural wife. So one problem is Noble makes other claims that we can check on and they're false. So he says oh. he not only performed the first plural marriage in this dispensation, he says he fathered the first child in plural marriage in this dispensation. Hmm. We know that's not true. We know Heber C. Kimball and others had children in polygamy before him. Hmm. Hey, so Joseph B. Noble has a, uh, yeah. Not to make a tangent. Why is why is everybody in half the restoration just making stuff up in the in the record? Like every time we're going through, it's like some random Jedediah P. Buttersworth made up the fact that he stole a river. Like there's always people lying. So, so what's on going on? One, on this one, we've got more reasons for this. Okay, so he has a descendant who's a scholar who wrote a biography hmm. of Joseph Bates Noble, his like great 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 grandfather. And he says a couple of his ancestors' flaws were he was terrible with dates first. Okay. Now remember, mm -hmm. this is the guy we're relying on for our date of Joseph Smith's first plural marriage. And he's, his biographer says he's terrible with dates. Why are we relying on the guy who's terrible with dates? Uh -huh. Right. His descendant also says he was a big boaster. Well, we can see that, right? I yeah. performed the first plural marriage in this dispensation. I had the first child in plural marriage in this dispensation. Okay. And it's not. It's like True, the criterion right? of embarrassment, but the reverse right, is what he's right. going with. So yeah. he, he's got, he's just got a bias toward, I think he probably really believes that these are the first, but he also really wants them to be the first and he loves to talk about it, right? So um, he, the date that he gives for Joseph Smith's marriage in this affidavit, he says it's April 5th, that happens to be the date of his own plural marriage, first plural marriage to his first plural wife, mm -hmm. Joseph B. Oh. Noble. 
in, oh, his, okay. his year, in, in 1843, two years later. Okay. So is it coincidence that he's the date he's giving is actually the same date as his own plumage, or is he getting confused? I'm going to suggest most probably he's getting confused. Okay. To the guy, because he was also called uh, terrible at dates anyway, so <laughs> that makes That's sense. That's his, yeah, n- uh, like, his uh, own his ancestor alias, saying that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so um, next... Noble, even though everybody uses this date, April 5th, 1841, Joseph B. Noble gives several different dates. He says, well, maybe it was May. He says, maybe it was the 6th, not the 5th. He says, well, it could have been 1840. Might have been 1841, but maybe it was 1842. When he's questioned on this years later in the Temple Mm. Lot case, they try to pin him down on a date. And ultimately, he's like, okay, somewhere between 1840 and 1842. So then... Uh, so the only thing these dates have in common is that they're all in the spring and they're in the early 1840s. So apparently what, what we do know about this marriage is it's in the early 1840s and it was in the spring. Right? So um, if the but when he was asked in the Temple Lot case when the marriage occurred and he gives this range of years, he's also asked where does this marriage occur? And what he says, and I might have a slide that deals with this. Oh, okay. I do. Yeah, I think the next one. What he says um, is it occurred in my house at Nauvoo. He's asked, where did it occur? Uh, You know, like it was performed in Nauvoo. Yes, sir, at whose house? At mine. The problem with this, we know when this guy moved to Nauvoo and built his house. He didn't move to Nauvoo until the fall of 1841, after the marriage is supposed to have occurred. Ah, And he didn't hmm. build his house till after. And the next couple of slides show how uh, like like multiple scholars have concluded this right so what's the smoking gun what's well, the bombshell tell me bro so so i'm i'm getting there okay <laughs> okay so um keep uh, maybe keep going down um okay so we've got like you know one scholar gary bergera drew this conclusion about when they moved to the house then the next slide is like the descendant biographer drew the same conclusion Okay. okay. So here's a, an experiment that I want you to do. Okay. Yeah. Like those here and those listening, watching. Experimentation. Um, so ready, ready. take a sec. Okay. Mm-hmm. And picture Joseph Smith picking out his first Nauvoo plural wife. Picture him like in your mind, actually see the woman. He's looking at the woman and he's anticipating, I'm going to marry her. Okay. Now just hold that image in the back of your mind. Ugh, okay? it's redhead. And let's let's keep <laughs> no, <I'm> going. Just <laughs> I just thought of Sydney Sweeney, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm doing it. I don't blame him <laughs> for oh sure. What <laughs> this image is going to be important. Okay, keep, oh. keep us going. Mm. Okay, here we go. Here is. Okay, s- so I already went there. Okay, next. okay. Thought experiment. Picture Joseph oh, okay, Smith. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Boom. Okay. So here's the traditional order of Joseph's Nauvoo plural wives. We've got Louisa Beeman first, but like she can't have been in the spring of 1841 because they didn't have their house then. So if it's in the spring, it had to be in the spring of 42. So she's out of place. Okay. So in the next slide, we move her okay. down to her proper place in the you know in the order order yeah. right to April uh, 1842. So when number one uh, on the list let's grab that drops, slide. yeah. When number one on the list drops down, then number two becomes number one. So the next slide after this is the corrected shows, order. Right, yeah, the corrected okay. order. Okay. So the first one is Zina Huntington Jacobs. Okay. So this has surprising implications, right? It's important in history. We get the events in the right order. That's when we're going to see the cause and effect relationships of what happened. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. Um, when you pictured Joseph Smith anticipating marrying his first Nauvoo wife, what I want to know is which of these did you picture? So go to the next slide, or maybe that's the one after that. Rich, uh, which one of these do you picture? Which of these did you picture? Uh, okay. uh, In other uh, words, uh, no. <laughs> how <laughs> pregnant did you picture her when you pictured Joseph Smith choosing his first Nauvoo plural wife? Uh, not pregnant. Uh, because not pregnant the correct all. image that you should have had is the third, I believe it's the third one from the right there, the seven months pregnant. If you go to the next slide. Okay. That, okay. Oh, suddenly this gets very less not sex. <laughs> uh huh. Right, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm, ima- I'm imagining like the baddest chicken Nauvoo, <laughs> like just super hot. He was uh-huh. like, "I'll take that one." That right. seems like a like a task. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So nobody pictures the woman very pregnant. Nobody. Okay. Yeah. And yet, this is Zina's son, born with her legal husband, Zebulon Jacobs, his headstone, right? That shows he was born on January 2nd, 1842. Zina marries Joseph on October 27th of 41. Two months before the child is born, she is seven months pregnant at the time of the marriage. Oh, wow. wow. And yet, it doesn't stop there. Okay, mm. so if you go to the next... Okay. Slime. So while okay. I'm doing that, though, I just want to say the first connection I'm making in my mind is we just had a whole long deep dive into Fanny Alger and how that was basically a non-sexual thing. The lies about her being a minor. She was really 18. Um, and and a lot of the sensational garbage uh, thrown at Joseph Smith about her being untrue. And then now you're saying his second one was a woman who was pregnant. And again, obviously, it's an impossibility uh, any of the salacious childbirth stuff that you were talking about before is, is is am I am I connecting these dots properly? Yes. And I, so, what was worse, or the 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 father of the baby? Father of the baby, Henry Jacobs, was around. They had only recently married. He was living in with her, obviously in Nauvoo. The descendants of this child, who was born two months after Joseph marries her, have been DNA tested, and they. He, they are that he was the child of the legal husband Henry Jacobs. He was not Joseph Smith's child, so it's crystal okay. clear she was pregnant from her legal husband, getting close to giving birth, and then Joseph Smith marries. Her. This okay. is amazing wait, that wait. you are doing this math and then finding okay. gravestones and then figuring out the dates can't match you're up. Like, this is incredible. Wait, you're like, like a detective. Yeah. What yeah. the heck? Yeah. So why did he marry her if she was married? Yeah. yeah why? Let's let's. Okay, great question. We'll, let's go to that. And okay. why did he marry her so, because she, when she was pregnant? So to figure out the how, why, to figure out someone's motives, we need to look at the pattern of their behavior, right? So yeah. it's okay. not enough sure. to just look at a single instance of their behavior, right? So here are the wives after Zina, okay? So the next one is her sister, Presendia Huntington Buell. Joseph marries her six weeks after he marries Zina. Okay, uh, next slide. Um, she, um, uh, next slide. Yeah. Okay. She has a baby in 1842. Okay. okay. But we don't know the date mm -hmm. of when the baby was born because the baby doesn't survive. So they don't actually record the exact day. They just record the year. Oh. Okay. And so there's a two out of three chance because he doesn't marry her until December, uh, mid-December of 41. There's basically a two out of three chance that she is pregnant as well when the baby is born, since we know the baby was born in 42. Okay, wow. so you're saying like the first two thirds of the year, if the right. baby was born anytime during that right. time, then she would have been pregnant already. Right. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so then we go to the next wife down on the list. Okay, okay. next okay. wife. And she appears to not be pregnant. This is Joseph's widowed sister-in-law. Okay, she could have had a pregnancy from her legal, from her husband before he died, but there's we don't have evidence for that. So next. Okay. So, so the fourth Nauvoo wife, Mary Elizabeth Rollins Leitner. Okay. Um, she's married to Joseph in January or February of 42. So she was seven or eight months pregnant because she has a baby in March. Okay. Oh. So all of these women are very pregnant so far. So they're, they're very pregnant, right? So, so like, it, it, well, the second one is like, at least likely. two of them yeah. are very yeah. pregnant and, and probably three of them are pregnant. So this is a pattern. This is deliberate. Yeah, I was going to say why. This is well, deliberate. Yeah, okay. So Joseph is actually deliberately choosing women who are not only pregnant, but like about to give birth. Hmm. So then, Kweku, your question, like, why is he marrying married woman? But also, like, why is he marrying very pregnant women? Right. It's almost as if he wants a baby to be born soon after he marries this woman. Right. So in the understanding of, in the medical understanding of the 1800s, you did not have sex during pregnancy, especially as you were well into pregnancy because it could be harmful to the mother and the child, okay? So if Joseph Smith is looking for immediate sex with like the hottest chicks in Nauvoo, like he's doing it wrong in Quaker, you needed to like give him lessons or something, right? Because yeah. like, like somebody <laughs> needed to teach this guy because he he doesn't know. He, he he's just, using their pregnancy he he's as doing. as proof that he's not having sex with them because that oh, would have been taboo. Oh, okay. I mean, maybe, right? So so we're left to kind of infer from the pattern of his behavior. He he clearly this is deliberate, hmm. right?
So whenever people are like, well, wow. Joseph was marrying other men's wives, they're leaving out a, a lot of context because that makes it sound like he's stealing why, like the husband's in the back chopping wood and he has her in the kitchen. And he's like, come on, a quickie before he comes back in. So like, that's what I'm imagining. But yeah. this is totally, totally different. OK, so he has something in his mind going on. We're not quite sure what it is, but you probably know. Actually, yeah. I, I, I think I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> I think sure I'm, leading us I, there, I'm yeah. telling you, this is what the evidence is showing me is that. He knew that he was going to be accused of the worst, just like he is accused of the worst nowadays, of just being some kind of predatory sexual person who's using the doctrine of eternal marriage and polygamy in order to get access to a bunch of hot babes and start some big polygamous orgy that all of the Northeastern journalists get to write about in sensational ways. But instead of just pursuing booty, he's actually specifically marrying women that he knows will represent an absolute lack thereof when it gets out, but nobody, especially not the anti-Mormons, have done any kind of true research into this subject and noted this pattern until Don Corleone Bradley descends from on high. The prodigal professor of polygamy, <laughs> all right, decides the sultan of a studious swat writes the book <laughs> on the subject and proves it was otherwise. This is amazing. The so, great Don Bino. So, <laughs> so if, if Joseph is... It's as if he wants children to be born in these marriages as soon as possible. Yeah. And so maybe that's actually what he wants, right? So if Joseph has this idea of raising up, he's supposed to raise up seed through polygamy. Yeah, from Jacob too. Well, does he have to do that by sleeping with the women and then they, like, over across nine months, they come up with a baby? Or could he <sighs> basically adopt children I have into never this lineage heard by this marrying version. them just before they give birth? <laughs> this is awesome. Right? Yeah. So mm. if you Whoa. look at, like, the... <laughs> this is literally, like, blowing my mind because it's always presented as, like, one of the two, He w polygamy is bad. And it's for sex, or it never happened, and it's a lie. And you're like, well, here's the third <laughs> version, and it makes a lot of sense. We have yeah. put up with 200 years of lies, <laughs> nearly 200 years of lies about polygamy, and finally Dawn just blows the doors off a 200-year-old castle of lies. <laughs> no, no question. What? How did the husbands react, though? So uh, we don't, we don't have much of anything from the husbands um and brian hales has pointed out that we don't have complaints from the husbands right yeah um, did they stay so members of the church they not all of them were right not all of them were they overwhelmingly do stay with the church and so um they, I'll, I'll be honest there's a lot we don't know about what was going on and so we this is why i'm looking at the pattern of mm -hmm. joseph's behavior and then trying to infer so basically, I've talked about this, like, I think other times we've talked, right? But like, um, we set up in history, we set up a model to explain someone be, someone's behavior. So my model used to be, right, when I was doing all this research for Brian Hales and I was out of the church, my model was Joseph Smith was an opportunist. Whatever he was doing, he was doing for himself. This was about him. So polygamy from that vantage point, of course, it's about sex and, and so on. Um, so the question is, how much does that model explain the pattern of what Joseph is doing from yeah. the historical records? It does it. How much does it not? Yeah. And so people have thought it explains it because they thought, well, Louisa Beeman's first young single chick, you know, immediately sexually available and so on. Yeah. And but then once you get the correct pattern, it's like, no, he's doing something else. So what is it? And we have to start trying to infer so basically the more research we do the more we line up these data points in the correct order so what now, have you surmised from this come on there well, has I, to be an I, I one, more, one more really important question i know we gotta ask okay the of these what what you know about these wives were they moving in with joseph and living with him or no, were they staying they, they were their, staying their, with their families their okay so is, this was more of like a ceiling um he was doing and less of yeah like big wedding they're coming in oh, and living right. with them it's more of like these sealing totally. ceremonies totally okay so i i have a question though on that that uh, hypothesis so if he was doing this to raise up children and he was basically using pregnant pregnant women to um to get married to them to get sealed to them so that they could already have these children so there was no you know no sexual relations necessary were the children his is that 
did they belong to him technically, like spiritually, well, eternally? I mean, that's, okay, it's that's, more of a born into the covenant situation. Yeah, I would yeah think. that's obviously that, not what he was going that, for. That, that is a theological question, and I do find those interesting. But I'm not a theologian; I'm a historian, right? Okay. And so, but if that's the reason, if that's the reason that we're saying, then we kind of have to figure out whether, because if they still belong to the other family, to the other husband. Yeah, I, I don't think he was sequestering religiously children into some kind of odd yeah. birthright. So I, it's, I, I think this kind of answers it. Live, lever at marriage right. involves like raising up seed for your brother. I, I imagine right. this who's would be dead though. Yeah, it, in which case one of these people was. I think right. it would probably be something where he's like, "Hey, we're Jacob too." Talks about raising up seed to the Lord. Right, right. and I'm all, and I'm so, all for that. Yeah. Well, so in the interest of time, like. let's move yeah. on from that question okay. because so, we have limited time. So. I've got more. Well, before actually, before we go there, okay. So if you think about like when when people look at Joseph Smith and they say Joseph Smith is a con man, what are the things that they tend to think make it the most obvious? That he was just getting a bunch of ladies so, with this crazy golden book. Right. So I talk to people a lot who say I learned that Joseph Smith was a polygamist and I immediately lost my faith. So mm. the underlying assumption of that is what other reason is there? that he would practice polygamy than sex. Well, look at the data. There's got to be some other reason, right? Because right. his behavior doesn't fit mm -hmm. that model. So here where Joseph Smith in theory looks the worst, where people will say, right, like on Pints with Aquinas, right? They'll say, well, it's just so obvious this guy's a fraud. He goes and he takes a harem of wives. Okay, is it really obvious here? Because mm -hmm. n their model of what Joseph was about did not predict what we actually found, that he's marrying very pregnant women. And so their model sucks. It doesn't explain the data. <laughs> Dude, really? I, I right, feel right, so right. bad for Pints of Aquinas. I have spent three days with you, Don Bradley, recording in different settings and multiple times. And I've never heard you call out an actual individual channel and say their <laughs> model sucks. And with your scholarly background, oh my gosh, I feel really bad for Matt Frad right now. Is it Matt? Or is yes, it Tony? It's Matt. It's Matt. Oh, I feel so bad for him right now. He looks like he could be a Tony, like an Irish Tony. Well, I mean, so no. but to be fair, though, and not to go off into another tangent, but <laughs> Joseph's polygamy looks far different than Brigham's polygamy then. It does. And I'm working on a there's actually an expanded version of this presentation that covers how polygamy shifts over time and Brigham roles, Brigham, Brigham Young's role in that. That's that's way too big for this, okay? But there's more. Interesting. Okay, there's more. Well, because Brigham had a lot of kids. One okay, really quick thing. We know thing. he was he was doing it. Run <laughs> really quick thing. So what you're basically saying is we don't know the reason, but we know it was not to have sex with our, a bunch our, of women. Our data doesn't strongly um, tell us what the reason was, but it does a really good job of telling us what the reason would not have been. Yes. Okay. 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 Wow. okay. So yeah. we've all heard of the, oh, wow, that came out just right. Um, the angel with the drawn sword, who apparently hacked into my slide here. Um, but um, <laughs> like, so when did the angel with the drawn sword come, right? Did this actually happen? Because I have there, my doubts. There, oh, there, no, this is the coolest part. Okay, 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 okay. There's evidence that this happened, okay? This is the so, coolest. So go to the next one. Okay, next one right here. Hit it. So Zina says... This is how she's talking about Joseph Smith proposing to her in 1841. Hey, okay. he, Joseph, sent word to me by my brother Dimmick, telling, saying, tell Zina, I put it off, meaning proposing to her, I put it off and put it off till an angel with a drawn sword stood by me and told me that if I did not establish that principle upon the earth, I would lose my position in my life. Okay. So now the question is, again, much of history is about getting events in the right order. When did this event happen? Okay. Well, Joseph marries Zina on October 27, 1841. This event apparently happened shortly before that because Joseph tells her, I waited and I waited, but then the angel came with a drawn sword and I am not waiting anymore. I'm moving ahead. Mm -hmm. So if we look shortly before October 27, 1841, we should find something. We could potentially find something that might allude to like the angel with the drawn sword and help us understand that. Is that better. on the next slide? Go to the next slide. Okay, next slide. Okay. Um, so I looked in, oh, back one. Okay. I looked in the history of the church, okay, right before October 27th, one week before that exactly. Um, 
Orson Hyde recorded he saw the following in the night sky. A very bright glittering sword appeared in the heavens about six feet in length uh, with a beautiful hilt, plain as complete as any cut you ever saw. What is still re more remarkable, an arm with a perfect hand stretched itself out and took hold on the hilt of the sword. So how do you draw a sword? You reach down and you grab the hilt, right? Mm -hmm. Orson Hyde is seeing this in the night sky in the heavens. Okay, next slide. Next slide right here, as you wish. So, however, Orson Hyde was not in Nauvoo. He was on the other side of the world on a mission. He says on he was his on his passage Israel. from Beirut. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's the context in which he sees this. He's on a ship, right? And the Arabs on the ship, at the exact moment that he sees this in the sky, shout out, Allah, 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 meaning they saw it too. He's not seeing a vision. He's seeing an actual astronomical event. Yeah. Okay, so next slide. Oops. Uh, come on, here we go. There we go. So uh, what I figured out is that uh, like every year around mid-October, the Earth passes through the debris field left by Halley's Comet, right? And we mm. get, it's, it's in the direction of the sky where the constellation Orion is. Put and so the, uh, yeah. the Orionid meteors appear. Fun fact. Halley's Comet is named after Edmund Halley, who believed the Earth was hollow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You found a way to work found it in, brother. Segway you found to the a way. Ten tribes. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, okay, next. Okay, next one. So, Orion the Hunter, this is a constellation. So, near his upraised arm, he's holding, the, it's perceived that he's holding a weapon. Oh. And near the hand where he's holding that weapon, that's where the comets come out of Orson Hyde's glittering mm. sword would have actually been one of these. And then next slide. So what I found is I looked at for that year, when did the when did the meteor shower peak? It peaked on October 19th at 1 a, uh, in, in the early morning. Well, Orson Hyde's letter shows he saw this on October 19th at 1 a.m. Okay, so he was seeing these, <laughs> this meteor shower. What? And he was perceiving it as an angel or, or a, a heavenly hand drawing a sword. A now, at the same time, Joseph Smith is experiencing an angel with a drawn sword and what? therefore teaching Zina on the other side of the world polygamy, and mm. she goes into polygamy. So all kinds of questions arise like, what? What's the relationship between these things? Did Joseph have a vision? And then Orson Hyde sees a sign in heaven that's like confirming it. Did Joseph see the same thing in this guy that Orson did? Yeah. And they're interpreting it through the spirit in the same way? Or we're literally having signs in the heavens. What's, what's going on? Well, that's what but they're for. In any case, one of the oh, things that this well, suggests. Oh, well, and it also kind of makes you think of like Abraham's seeds will be in like the sands as they say in the stars. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, Whoa. I haven't thought of that actually. Okay. So this suggests something, again, something more is going on than this Joseph Smith character just like making up religious claims so he can have immediate sex with all the hottest babes in Nauvoo, right? This suggests either or both. That almost seems like the that, least likely option. Yeah. 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 This suggests either or both that uh, Joseph is having some actual supernatural experience that's being confirmed for Urson Hyde on the other side of the world in the, in the same, in another way, or Joseph is interpreting like heavenly signs as actual instructions from God, which would mean he's religiously sincere, which all of the critics, they assume he's a con man. Yeah. A con man doesn't care what the universe is trying to tell him. A con man doesn't look and say, what is God trying to tell me in the sky? Or what is God telling me through a vision or whatever? A con man only cares about getting what he wants. That's not what this guy is doing. So again, like over and over, when we really look at the details of his behavior and lay out the events in the right order, so we can see the cause and effect, see his motives, the guy is legit, right? He's sincere. He's, I, this is not about sex. This is not opportunism. So this is genuine religious sincerity. So what is the number one lie generally told about us by others that you feel this debunks? And then I'll go to Kwaku. What's the number one lie you feel this debunks? That Joseph Smith's polygamy was uh, opportunistic and it was about sex. So you think that this, all of this evidence here, you say completely disproves that he was a con man on the subject. Yeah, I think this refutes that. It means yes. there's something more esoteric going on. Mm -hmm. And 
there is a lot of occult traditions, um, especially from 19th century, that talk about whenever um, ascended beings come into mm-hmm. our world, they always come in during a With meteor meteors, shower. Meteors, yeah. yeah. Oh. So um, I'm wondering... Passing the veil in the firmament, right? Yeah, like, and it literally creates a... I'm wondering how much, if maybe this angel guy, like this is a signal that perhaps he saw this being here, but on the other side of the world... He's not seeing that being, but he's seeing the reaction to it. Well, also, we have to deal with the fact that, I mean, the translation of the word the Magi, some of the first to recognize the Christ as being what he was born on that day. They weren't holders of the traditional Levitical priesthood because in all of the ancient Greek, they don't use the word for priest. They don't use the word for scribe. They don't use the word for prophet. They use the word magus. And just like there was bad Magi like Simon Magus in the book of Acts. Okay, there there were the good Magi. Some people think they were, you know, contemporary Zoroastrians of the time that recognized all of the signs in the heavens and so on and so forth. But this is this is incredible stuff on that garden. They're following a star to Christ and Abraham, who Joseph Smith would have been thinking about as he's translating Mm -hmm. the book of Abraham. He's an astronomer. He's looking to the sky to learn things from God like. So actually, soon after this, Joseph Smith begins working with the Book of Abraham text again. Dude. Interesting. Whoa. So soon after a sign in the heaven that was confirmed Mm -hmm. on both sides of the world, not just by Orson Hyde, who has an entire park dedicated to him in Jerusalem. When me and Brad were there, (laughs) you could always talk to the local Jews and Zionists about Orson Hyde. And they're like, yeah, we credit a big part of the Zionist movement to him. We named a park after him. Well, he's seen these signs in the heavens. And that sword that Joseph Smith talked about, um, you know, basically ushering in eternal marriage on the other side of the world. Joseph Smith was seeing it and saying, this is a sign as well. That is incredible, you know. So for years, I should specify for years, I pursued the idea that Joseph Smith's polygamy was motivated by sex. During that time, I did the research for Brian Hales's Joseph Smith's Polygamy volumes that cite some 1,500 sources on the subject. And throughout that, I thought Joseph Smith's polygamy was motivated by sex. And so I was totally more than open to that idea. That that was my working model. That was the model I pursued in my research for years. And I was wrong. The data showed that I was wrong. And when the data showed that I was wrong, I did what I would hope we do when our data shows we're wrong. I changed my mind. Wow. Dude. All right, dude. So uh, this is incredible. Unfortunately, we got a heart out and we got a jam here. But um, what, what d- dude, uh, I I need some time. To I did not know this. this is the ending coming. It yeah, was like, I, I know for real. This. <sighs> Woo! You know what I'm saying? This All is right. Awesome. Let's keep the conversation going in the comments below. If you got any questions for Don Corleone Bradley here on this subject. Please just 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 let loose in the comments or check us out on wordradio.com. Right.